But I think at one point in time, it was a much bigger deal when there were larger populations of them and they would hunt people. They would attack people. You, are you aware of the, the World War One story? About them eating corpses? Well, not just that, about the, the Germans and the Russians having a ceasefire because so many people were getting eaten by wolves. That they, they, had a ce- they, they actually, I talked to Steve Rennell about it once hmm. and he didn't, he wasn't even sure if it was true. I, so they actually researched it huh. and found out it was true and they wrote an article on Meat Eater about it. No way. So I yeah. haven't seen it. So the story, I don't remember where I heard it from, but the story was, you know, the thing about war, especially trench warfare, mm-hmm. the horrific nature of it is that you don't necessarily always kill people you shoot them and hurt them and wound them and these wolves were aware that these people were living in these trenches and that they were wounded and so they smelled blood and they came in and there was so many instances of people getting dragged out of the trenches by packs of wolves and there were so many instances of uh, parties going out like two or three men and then they just find a boot with a foot in it and they realize like oh boy an animal's Mm -hmm. gotten them and so they decided to have a ceasefire mm-hmm. between the Russians and the Germans to just to get together and kill the wolves before they go back to killing each other. I'll have to look that up because I, I haven't actually heard See it. See if you can find that article. I believe it's on MeatEater.com. I'd like to know where the references are. Thanks. Was there a ceasefire during World War I to hunt wolves? But I want to know what the references for the story yeah. were. I think it's the New York Times. Okay. Multiple yeah. newspapers in 1917 report this story, including the El Paso Herald, yeah. Oklahoma City Times, and New York Times. Since then, it's become a favorite Bit of barroom banter among amateur historians, oh, like me, Joe Rogan. <laughs> uh, it's February 19th, it says it there. February 1917, right. a dispatch from Berlin noted large packs yeah. of wolves moving into populated areas of the German Empire in the forests of Lithuania and, I don't know how to say that word, Volhynia? Volhynia? How would you say that mm-hmm. word? Close enough. Locals <laughs> hypothesized the war effort displaced the wolves, so the canines started seeking out new hunting grounds. The hungry wolves infiltrated rural villages, attacking calves, sheep, goats, and in two cases, children. They also showed up on the front lines, feeding on the fallen and sometimes taking advantage of incapacitated fighters. Parties of Russians and German scouts met recently and were hotly engaged in a skirmish when a large pack of wolves dashed on the scene and attacked the wounded, reported a 1917 Oklahoma City Times article. Hostilities were at once suspended, and Germans and Russians instinctively attacked the pack, killing about 50 wolves. So these are one of the things that happens in Russia is you get these super packs. I'm sure you've heard about those where um, they've had problems with them descending on uh, whether it's a cattle ranch or horses. They've taken out horses. Poison, rifle fire, hand grenades, and even machine guns were successfully tried in attempts to eradicate the nuisance, according to a 1917 New York Times article. But all to no avail. The wolves, nowhere to be found quite so large and powerful as in Russia, were desperate in their hunger and regardless of danger. Yeah, I, I'm reading it, too. I just would say... You're a little skeptical? I'm very skeptical. Mm. Um, number one, there weren't... It yeah. says, though seemingly far-fetched, it turns yeah. out these claims are mostly accurate. Historians estimate that soldiers killed hundreds of wolves during the war and that the surviving wolves fled to escape a carnage the like of which they had never encountered. Click on that link. What is that? But we're looking at news stories from 110 years ago. I know. Look at that. 1917. <laughs> right. Wild. I, I'm just saying. A little skeptical? Well, no, they I'm not lie. a little skeptical. I'm very skeptical. Very skeptical. <laughs> they, well, they lie in the news now. I but know. But it seems like something <laughs> happened. I don't something think they happened. made up the fact that they all got together and shot wolves. So my question about this story, and I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just Largest saying wolf I, I'm pack. skeptical. 2010, 2011, a super pack of wolves numbering up to 400 reportedly terrorized the Russian town of, boy, good luck with that yeah. word. Sounds like a vodka. Verkoy, <laughs> Vojkoyansk. Uh, population so what, what's of 1,300. The um, the Guinness Book of World Records. Book of World Records. I, uh, Northern, it's like Wikipedia? <laughs> no, <laughs> they're a little better than that. <laughs> One, <laughs> Wikipedia is sketch. <laughs> One of the remotest inhabited areas of the Northern Hemisphere, more than 30 horses were killed in just four days. And I remember reading about this in 2010. Um, it said, um, according to local officials, teams of hunters were established to patrol neighborhoods and shoot the wolves on site. Animal experts suspicious of the claim say that wolves usually form packs of no more than 10 to 15 animals, although the particularly harsh winters may have killed off the wolves' usual pre- prey, forcing them to attack larger animals. This was, a, this was multiple sources had this story, yeah. and I, I remember it about a decade or so ago. Well, I'd love to look up more detail, but I can tell, I can tell you about, I can't tell you about the news source, and I, I'm not, not familiar with that, and I don't read 
that kind of stuff usually. But if it's true, it's true. I, I don't happen to believe it's true. But what I can tell you about the true about wolf biology is wolves live in packs that are generally a family group. They have a genetic investment in their pack members. There's oftentimes one or two that aren't related. And they defend that territory to the death, whether there's five of them or 25 of them. And that would be a large pack. The largest pack I've ever heard of in was in Yellowstone, I think it was 34, because three females had pups. So but to have 400 wolves I, move together. Is why would like, they do that? What's right. the benefit to them? They're, com- they're, they're gathering, collaborating with animals that aren't related to them, that have no genetic benefit to see them each survive. And normally, packs that are not related kill each other. It's the biggest cause of mortality in Yellowstone Park is wolves killing non-pack members. Wolves are very, very intelligent, though. Oh, right? I know. Extremely intelligent. Oh, yeah. yeah. And could you imagine a scenario where resources were so diminished that wolves recognized that killing each other had no benefit and that moving together as a group, they could do something to these farms? It's like if you are a, a pack of 400 yeah. wolves and you choose to attack horses, that seems to me a, a lot more success than three wolves or five wolves I, trying I get to do you're that. saying, but you ask, would I believe it? And I have to right. tell you, no, I wouldn't believe it. Well, this it. is based on your real life lived experience. But, I wouldn't believe it. But things do vary in co- oh, yeah. according to very unusual circumstances in terms mm-hmm. of the environment, right? So if there, were, if there were 400 wolves that were starving, they would starve. I mean, they unless w- they, wouldn't they knew pack. that there were horses. You're giving them some human reasoning yeah, skills. They don't think like humans do. They just don't. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. Don't be if I'm not calling you a liar. No, You're it's not the me. Story, Listen, I'm just I don't saying, know. I don't. I'd have to investigate that. But right. I'm, I'm a hundred percent skeptical on it, just because of everything that I'm familiar with. But it doesn't. You know, it stuff happens. I have, I uh, no pun intended, no dog in the race <laughs> or <laughs> no dog, dog in the, in the fight. fight. But my right? <laughs> my thought is that in perhaps unusual circumstances like Siberia, where it's so incredibly harsh, that if you do find a population mm-hmm. that had been surviving because there was a, a sufficient amount of wildlife mm-hmm. for them to kill, and then all of a sudden there wasn't, but there mm-hmm. was farms, and they all might kind of like descend on these farms and perhaps not even fight for resources because they realized mm-hmm. there was no benefit in that. You asked me, I just said, I don't yeah. believe it. So I hear you. That I don't have anything to contribute further on that. I guess you're just a science denier. That's okay, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a science denier. There you go. I like Isn't that. Isn't that a fun thing to call people? That's great. It's such a horrible thing to say to people. Like, what are you saying?